Okay, awesome. Um, let's get started. So um, today, uh, well, before we get started for today, I just want to catch everyone up uh, with the uh, last meeting. So um, last time um, we ran through uh, the proposal for uh, the proposal to do one. This discusses um, whether SIG API um, is needed and what um, all uh, would be the functions of this SIG. Um, there were some awesome feedback from, um, from folks who attended. And one of the um, action item was to um, discuss about how to move ahead um, and add um, new features, which are which are feature gated as alpha, uh, beta, and and um, eventually GA. Uh, well, the alpha and beta versions, well, especially the alpha one, how to add those unstable features into into a very stable um, V1 API. So um, I've done some um, research on how uh, Kubernetes itself um, does this. And my plan today was to talk about that. Uh, but before we go ahead, um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, raise this question to folks who are attending uh, for the first time. Um, did everyone get a chance to review this PR? Um, does do folks have thoughts on this that we can discuss um, today? No, sorry, I didn't have a yet. Okay. Okay. Um, well, if you haven't. Um, had a look, I would please encourage to, um, you know, take a look. I think this PR is uh, what is blocking us right now from moving um, the, the SIG forward. Uh, my plan is that once we have an agreement on that PR, um, we would work with Lee to come up with a charter and um, uh, with the paperwork for getting this six started. So uh, that would, uh, any thoughts on that PR would really be helpful. Okay. Um, with that out, I would like to um, discuss uh, some, uh, I would like to discuss some research I have been doing on how to add unstable features to stable version. So one of the um, examples that was shared in the last meeting was um, this field. So if you look at this field, it's a, a alpha featured field, which is added to pod spec. And we all know pod is a very stable API. So then a very obvious question arises is to how do we manage uh, an alpha field? Uh, well, an alpha feature which could be dropped on a very stable field, right? So a bit, I've done um, some digging here and it turns out that there are two, um, two main things that upstream Kubernetes follows. Um, the first thing is that whenever a feature request is accepted, there is a very uh, crisp guideline of what an alpha, beta, and GA feature um, looks like. So this helps in figuring out whether or not alpha is ready to be graduated to beta, beta is ready to be graduated to GA or not. So that's one thing, but uh, Qbert already has this. So then the second thing is that how does this impact the API field? And the, the impact is here. So whenever there is an alpha feature introduced, there is always an upgrade and downgrade strategies which are mentioned in the design doc. So um, the upgrade, the upgrade uh, strategy involves where this, this field is um, optional. So, um, 
it assumes that feature is disabled first and then enabled. So how does the field react to it? And then the downgrade um, strategy assumes that if you downgrade from current version to the previous version where this feature was not at all present, even in alpha, then how would you handle um, this scenario? How does the API field change? So this is pre precisely mentioned in the upgrade and downgrade um, strategy. So this is the first thing. And the second thing is when, when introducing such fields, there is a clear guidance on how to introduce those fields, right? So the very first um, thing is to add a feature gate. Then the second thing is to have, um, have this field optional. So both omit empty as well as the optional tag and to ensure that whenever we read or write from the API, if the field is empty, the, um, the JSON object does not have that field at all. So if these optional tags are not present, then JSON encoding and decoding will default it to um, regular fields. And so for example, if this were int 32 uh, and omit empty was not present, then it would be defaulted to zero. Um, which we discussed last time with one of the um, status field runtime user. That's what is happening. And that, that will lead to side effects when deprecating or evolving um, the API field. So that's the second one. Um, the more interesting ones are um, here. So let's say for some reason, hmm, this feature progresses in beta or in stable version in such a way that uh, the field, the API field must be um, changed or must uh, be changed in an incompatible way. Then the guidance is that we uh, deprecate this field totally. We choose a new field such that users who are already using this will not collide with that field. And then that new field will be introduced in the beta version of um, the, the feature. Um, so what this will help us is it will help achieve evolution of stable API as well as um, alpha and beta uh, feature flags um, in a safe way where nothing is broken um, while encoding or decoding those JSON objects. So yeah, um, I, I think these are the um, guidance I have found from uh, from upstream Kubernetes, and um, I I would put this as a reference in the um, in the design doc in my pull request. But just wanted to bring this here if anyone has thoughts on on this. Okay, looks like none. I have one, one note, I guess. Uh, the governor is also talking about downgrade, but we officially don't support downgrade. But I guess you don't want to do something like one, like a copy of one or one. Um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. So Kubernetes talks about downgrade, but at, at the design level, I feel like even though we don't support a downgrade, it's still important from uh, API uh, evolution perspective to talk about down, downgrade because so if you imagine downgrade as 
an upgrade where this API field is uh, removed. So if you talk about an alpha feature where you are not sure if this API will be if this API field will be present in beta or not. So in, in that case, if you treat downgrade as an as another upgrade, but just where this field is removed, that's where the value of having um, thought about downgrade will be helpful. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah. So uh, I missed the first call probably because I was on PTO, but um, what are your plans? So you are planning to just uh, make formal SIG API group and we and the group would be responsible for API use. So any PR would mm, would be need, need to be approved by, uh, by this group? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I, I'll quickly summarize um, what's present and what we discussed in, in the last call. So um, basically my what I'm proposing in this PR is that um, there are three uh, clear goals of, um, of this group, um, SIG API. One is to help contributors, um, you know, have a very crisp guideline of how to implement API facing change. So, for example, if you look at these guidelines that upstream Kubernetes has, um, this would be the guiding point of what we want to have as our guidelines, but our guidelines will be very similar to uh, what upstream Kubernetes has. So, one thing is the first goal is to come up with the, with such guidelines so that new contributors can easily follow those. Um, and, you know, um, reading from that, they can um, add new features. The second is the same guidelines will help um, reviewers for, um, for doing the necessary checks. So one of the things that I'm proposing is that there is a, there is a kind change in uh, Kubernetes. In sorry, there is a label kind change with API here, and all of these APIs should be all of these pull requests should be um, reviewed by the API SIG API group, um, and all of these should follow like the reviews should follow certain guidelines. So the second goal is to come up with um, guidelines for um, reviewers. And as an extension of that, there is also uh, an opportunity to, um, you know, make the necessary tools that can make this review, um, review process reliable and easier. So last time I, I talked about one such tool, um, which, which is an automated, which you can plumb into CI CD system as an automated um, unit testing uh, mechanism. It will basically catch all the incompatible API changes coming in. So that's one tool. It will help a lot in reviewing those. Um, and then the third is, let's say an API breakage is really discovered. Um, then this, like this group will come up with um, some sort of um, a guideline to how to handle those breakages. So those are the three main goals I have for this group. And um, this document, um, you know, talks in detail about how um, each of these goal can be achieved. But okay. yeah, that's that's my uh, proposal. Yeah, sounds good. Do you have any other? Objection. Um, okay. So and the... one more, one more thought we discussed last time is right now these PRs are not gated, so um, it's not a very formal process where 
Um, if you don't have a review from somebody in the Sage API, this PRs will be stale and will not uh, go through. It's yeah. not getting as of now. So, yeah, I mean, so, for, yeah. so for, yeah, I think uh, we should probably finish the discussion with the six and when they are formally formed, then you could basically split out the ownership of the code, which means that you can, in the API directory, you can just define the ownership Mm -hmm. And then only those people can approve. And Pro then requires, or Tide requires, the approval of of uh, of the people which are stated in the file. Yeah, yeah, we can easily like from a from an orchestration point of view, we can achieve that. But it, I assume there will be a lot of discussion that will be needed before we can. Uh, before we can achieve that, right? So um, in the meantime, if um, this, the people involved in the same group can you know, attend this call, and if we can take down um, some uh, PRs from here, um, basically you know, help the contributors or use this PR to come up with those guidelines, then that would be, yeah really starting the work for this without letting the process hinder it. So that was the idea I discussed last time. Pardon me, I, I didn't quite get what you mean by, by, by this last sentence. So what I meant was that even without um, without having those gated changes, right? Like even though they, these PRs are not gated, um, when when we when this call meets every week, we can have a thirty minute or or some slot where these PRs will be discussed anyway. So um, the benefit of reviewing this PR can be achieved even without those um, gating changes. Okay, so we want to use this time for reviews. Yeah. And I don't um, necessarily mean that, I mean, I'm totally flexible on how to do that. We can, um, you know, do it offline and come up with just discussion points or um, review it on the call. I'm flexible, don't have opinions on that. But, um, you know, having that um, will really help uh, move this effort forward. Yeah, I'm not sure how popular it would be to have the reviews on call. Um, but I'm not against it if somebody wants to do it. Well, maybe yeah, what we could I... do is like the, um, we could have, like there maybe there's, there's some of them that are more critical than others. Like Elaine, like I maybe have an example on the ones you listed where it's, we run into these situations where um, where they need a lot of discussion on how to proceed. Sure. Like, because, yeah. because what I guess, what I'd expect is like, you you would, um, like if you looked at one of those PRs and you opened it up and we saw a problem, you, you know, maybe someone leaves a comment from this reviewer group on there. And then this person would probably want to discuss it, maybe on the PR, maybe not. Maybe they want to come here because it's a really difficult discussion. That, that, that could also be a place to do this. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you uh, if you open up this call for people trying uh, trying to find some help or guidelines, that makes sense. Yeah, I think is that what um, is that what the Kubernetes API review does? Like they do that's they go yeah. through they, they go through the do reviews and give some advice on how people could meet the guidelines. That's right. Yes, that's what they do. So they have a very streamlined process um, where uh, each review will end, like each PR with API facing change will end up on that, their uh, board and they'll triage that board for whichever PRs that they need a live discussion. They'll put it in their agenda and then discuss it in that API review uh, meeting. 
I think that's what they do. I am. Um, I'm potentially very optimistic and naive with this, but I'd like to think that eighty to ninety percent of um, the conversation would be happening on um, the PR itself, and it's just those edge cases that come up occasionally. And yeah, it, we could even potentially just add that to the agenda of even the community meeting, rather than have a dedicated slot that only gets partially used for a CKPI call. So I think a lot of it should be relatively straightforward. Um, and yeah, as has been pointed out, just that complicated stuff, but it's much faster to resolve uh, in person. Um, and because like, that to me would be perfectly reasonable to have as part of the community call. This is me just trying to uh, have less meetings for everyone, I think. Thank no, I, I think that really makes sense. Um, my my kind of uh, goal was that since we are introducing this process, it would take some time for folks to go through that. And at least initially, we, we will need to talk through those process things. But if we can, you know, do this on the PR and asynchronously, I'm definitely up for less meetings. Makes sense. Alay, do you want to, do you have an example one that's, um some recent one that you want to walk through maybe that might also help people with reviewing your proposal kind of understanding like what the process would look like we can oh we have um, here. we can take 10 minutes to do that if you have one that's kind of so yeah so i think i have let me go through this So this is an example which we have done in the past, Ryan. Uh, not sure if talk, like talking through this can help out. Um, or yeah, did you want yeah. to do a new, new one? No, no, let's do one. I, I'd rather we do one we, we, that you're familiar with, just be, I, as an example, because I think um, I, in the interest of speeding up the everyone's understanding and, re, and review of your proposal, and how this is going to look in this meeting or in the community meeting uh, in that interest, we can maybe do, I mean, we can walk through how this would look as an example, on, like on this PR. Sure. Yeah. So um, th this PR was originally introduced to add um, uh, multi-architecture um, support. And there were, API facing changes here. Um, so this field was added as um, uh, as the new field um, part of this um, feature. And there were a um, lot of contentions about how to achieve this um, in, a, in a way which is which has um, safe defaulting. And um, so what we did was um, in like internally, we had um, these kinds of um, filtering where um, we would filter on the label and uh, give reviews um, to API facing changes where needed. So Ryan and I had a um, lot of discussion around what would be the best way to um, add this field. And eventually what happened is that, as um, Andrew mentioned, a lot of the discussion happened, um, even though it happened on a call, but asynchronously it was communicated via um, comments on, on the pull request. And we ended up deciding um, and API field, which was um, which had the correct defaulting, 
and um, in fact, the same pattern that was used in this particular PR um, was used was used again in another uh, PR. So uh, I don't. I think it was. Yeah, it was exactly similar pattern. So this this PR is why th this is the example I'm using where this call will be helpful because not only were we able to um, you know push the changes forward the guideline was you know identified as a best practice so that it can be used in um, other prs so that's how i envision this um, you know group working uh, ryan does that help i like exemplify what um what the proposal is talking about yeah like i do you have what was the specific you said like what was the specific thing you wanted to change in here um i thought you oh. scrolled past it or something yeah there was a um, good example of what like what we should not do when on the api when we want to make an api change Okay, so what was happening is that there was a field introduced spec VMI spec dot architecture, and this field, um, if it is not populated by um, the user, hold on, just yeah. interrupt for one more second. What? Okay, you got it right there. I want to make sure. So this is on the VMI. So like a stable, yeah. a stable API, we're adding something to the to the spec. Correct. Yeah, so what was happening is that on a stable API, we are adding a field and that field is, um, that field has an omit empty flag. So it will be uh, empty if uh, not specified by the user, right? And this is a new field. So all the VMIs will be, um, all the existing VMIs will have this field as empty to start with. So then what we were doing is um, if the word, so if the spec architecture is empty, we were defaulting it as um, runtime go arch. Now this runtime go arch is populated from the runtime of the webhook because this was being defaulted by uh, the webhook and that API could, uh, could be running uh, sorry, that webhook could be running on a um, AMD 64 architecture first, and then it could be running on ARM 64 later. So if that would be the case, what would end up happening is some VMIs would default to AMD 64, others would default to ARM 64, depending on where, uh, which port API pod or which webhook pod serves that request. So um, this was the problem identified. It was not identified in the um, in the PR itself, but it was identified in the review. So then how we ended up solving this is instead of um, instead of putting this spec in the spec field, uh, a proposal was made that um, we would have a cube word status dot um, runtime default um, in the status section. We would have a field which will first be populated, and if this field is not uh, is empty, then it would always be populated from that status. And the status is a one time um, write um, in the API. So that will help us make sure that the defaults are really uh, predictable. The original solution had a problem that the defaults were not at all uh, predictable, uh, deterministic. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, so for are, instance, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there are always, uh, with API, it's, uh, 
need to need to consider a lot of things and a lot of, a lot of interaction between features. So uh, to me, it's, it makes sense if you have a dedicated group that doesn't really know uh, the semantics of the API and all the APIs that are here and consider all those uh, or those impacts. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so um, just wanted to talk about next steps. So I was thinking of um, accommodating this new learned um, process from upstream Kubernetes into my design proposal. And uh, yeah, I'm really kind of, um, asking folks for um, reviews on this. The more discussions we have, the, the better it will um, be to move things forward. So if people have um, you know, some bandwidth to, to take a look at this PR, that would really be helpful. Yep, I think we need to first uh, match the seek work in general and then we can focus on on uh, the SIG API here. Uh, that, that's my two cents. So, I would say this um, design proposal can be merged while we're still figuring out the SIG stuff. It, we could, but it would be really hard for us to enforce something, I believe. So this design proposal is a prerequisite for that SIG uh, stuff to settle down, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't review your uh, PR completely, but if we, so let me put it this way. If we are only talking about guidelines and not about formally forming some group, then we can merge it. If we are forming some kind of group and we want to have uh, also some kind of involvement with the PR reviews, I think it would be better to trade for the SIG work so we can actually enforce it by rules uh, on the CI and uh, like formally started work as, as well. I see. So the way I am, um, the way I'm thinking about this is the the design proposal is kind of talking about um, the need to form this group. And if this group is at all formed, what would be its goal and non-goals and, and things like that? So my thought process is that that can be independent of the SIG, uh, forming the SIG uh, work that is happening in another call. And the reason for it is that before actually forming the group, we should talk about what that group would be doing, whether it is needed or not, and so on and so forth. So all of that is happening in that design proposal. So kind of a long way of saying that, in my opinion, this is really the prerequisite. So once we identify that, okay, this is needed and this is how we are going to do it, then we can go to that um, what's next SIG call and you know, talk about formalizing it. Yeah, um, I mean, what, why I would prefer personally to wait for the SIG work is to actually try out their process to form the group, right? Because you will then provide also feedback to some work which is ongoing and might be uh, used in the future by somebody else. So that would be. okay. Good scenario. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely uh, the plan is to, uh, I think we've talked to Lee in, in that group and um, talked about using SIG API as the first uh, group to, to use that process. But really, uh, 
if if that process is there and if this design proposal has not moved forward then we are kind of going in rounds right uh, you first need to um, agree or align that okay we are going to do this this new group is is going to handle these things uh, on on this and then um, use the new sake forming uh, process Makes sense. Okay, I I think that's all I had um, as part we, of. The, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, um, just wanted to ask you: Do we have any? Uh, do we know already if anybody would be? Uh, likely to join this group? Uh, from from the current maintainers, I I was hoping um, I I was hoping to get some participation. I don't know if somebody is already interested in in um, taking this forward. Um, I can definitely say from my side, I am very, uh, I am very interested in in you know volunteering all the work needed um, for this group. So I'll be happy to help um, in any way possible. Okay, I think the idea with this six is that there will still a few folks um, with full power on the project. Uh, and therefore they will be, or they can represent any, any seek in a sense, and approve the, the work even from their perspective. But yeah, I, uh, having dedicated people on uh, the SIG API would be also welcoming. I guess. Yeah, I think we need to identify uh, a person who, who can help with that. I unfortunately don't know um, anyone currently. Okay, I mean, for, at least for my side, I, I have a look on the your PR, which somehow describes what a group should do, and um, let's hope we can also move the seek work as well. Okay, awesome. Alea, I'll, I'll volunteer from the the maintainer side to help with. Uh, that sounds like Lubo is also interested too. But maybe between the two of us, we can start off as helping with the reviews. Sure. Yeah, that will be awesome. And I guess one more um, one more step you can implement is to actually ask on the on the community meeting if anybody needs help and uh, then direct them here to this call uh, as a dedicated time uh, which you are able to contribute to them. Sorry, Lubo, I did not follow that. So you're saying um, anyone who needs help um, as um, new contributors? Um, not necessarily as new contributor, maybe as you described, having some kind of difficulties implementing the APR or not really um, having a, a fault how the API should, should, should look like. And you can like redirect them here from that community uh, meeting. 
Sure. Because we, yeah. we all, all, already have the the time slot where we go over the PRs, which doesn't have attention yet, right? And if you see some kind of a API change there, maybe that's a good opportunity to uh, get some buy buyback. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, um, so I think we have um, the next steps and um, we have some ideas to uh, take forward. Um, I think it's, it's next steps for, for the next meeting. Um, as I said, I would accommodate these things in the PR and we'll also try to come up with a few uh, PRs that, that we can uh, move fro forward from the existing uh, open PRs list. I think that will be really be helpful um, and a good starting point for for the uh, next call. Yeah. Do do you meet weekly? Yeah. For now, okay. that's the plan until uh, we don't have these things stabilized. Um, we can consider um, another cadence um, if that's okay um, once we stabilize. Okay, I will be out next week, but uh, I, I should be here uh, in two weeks. Okay, awesome. All right, folks, I think that's all I have. Um, does anyone have anything to add? If not, we can call it early. No, thanks a lot. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.